Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Solar Saturdays here on Why Not RV. This week we're going to talk about inverters. Remember, if you want to learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Now, when people talk about solar and solar systems, the first thing people think about is the solar panels, okay? Which we talked about that a couple weeks ago, so check out that video up here. Uh, and then after that, we talked about solar charge controllers because that's how they properly charge your batteries. And then from there, we actually talked about batteries. So, so far, all I've talked about is essentially how to collect power from the sun and store it safely. So now the last big key factor of a solar system is how do you actually use that power? How do you take your DC battery power and turn it into AC power to use in your RV? And that's what an inverter is. Your inverter literally just takes your battery power and turns it into AC power. And the reason I say battery power is because I'm not gonna say 12 volt or 24 volt or 48 volt because so those are all different just voltages of battery banks. But for me, I have a 48 volt battery. So my inverter is a 48 volt inverter that takes it into 120 volt AC power. Now, most standard inverters are gonna be 12 volt that go from 12 volt DC power, your standard battery, to 120 volt AC power. And there are tons and tons and tons of different inverters on the market and different uses for different inverters, okay? So let's just talk about some of them and how we kind of go from really basic to really advanced and some of the few things in between of what the options are. First thing first, an inverter, you need to make sure you have an inverter that's properly sized for your use. If you're only gonna use it to run computers, you know, some chargers, um, you know, uh, TV, etc., stuff like that, then all you need is maybe a 500 to 1000 watt inverter. If you're gonna be trying to use your microwave or a hair dryer, or even just say the electric heating element of your water heater, now you're gonna need to be bumping up into a 2000 watt inverter or even higher than that. A 3000 watt inverter is typically gonna be enough to run an air conditioner or maybe even two, depending on how they, how they start or what the uh, starting capacity of that inverter is. But um, what I have is two 5 kVA, which is equivalent to about 4,200 watts of inverters, or, or times two, so it's really like 8,400 watts of available inverter power. So for me, that is enough to literally do everything in the RV all at once. I can run both rooftop ACs, the mini split, the water heater, the washer, the dryer, a hair dryer, the microwave, toaster oven, all at the same time. And all that equivalent is probably close to seven or 8,000 watts and I'll be getting pretty close. But I've never once come anywhere near the, the peak. I think the most I've ever pulled out of it is about 6,000 watts at once. But that just goes to show how, how high end you can go with an inverter. And like I said, there's several different inverters out there on the market. Um, you know, for example, I love the Victron products. I have two Victron Quattros. Those are some of the most advanced inverters that are out there. Um, you know, the Victron Multi Plus and Multi Plus 2 is an amazing, amazing inverter. And honestly, it's probably what 99% of people who want an inverter and want to do solar, that's, it's usually all they need is that Multi Plus or a Multi Plus 2. And then from there, you can step down into some of the, the normal inverters that are inverters only because the Multi Plus and the Quattros are actually more than just an inverter, but we'll talk about that another day. So, you know, you, you can go down and, and the price goes down pretty, pretty quickly. You know, you can get a thousand watt inverter for a couple hundred bucks and start to get to work. 2000 watt, still only a couple, or a couple hundred bucks and, you know, start to run bigger things. 3000 watt inverters, again, now you can run air conditioning and whatnot, but it just depends on your use and what you need out of it. The very first inverter I ever installed in an RV was a 2000 watt uh, pure sine wave. I always, always, always recommend pure sine wave. Let's talk about that here in just a second. But it was just a 2000 watt inverter that was for, just right from the batteries and it fed a group of circuits in my last RV. And that's all I used it for. I quickly realized that I wanted more out of an inverter and out of my off-grid setup. So that's when I bumped up to the Multi Plus. But let's talk about real quick that pure sine wave versus modified sine wave. I'll start by just saying you want a pure sine wave inverter, okay? You don't ever want a modified sine wave inverter. They're not applicable for the things that you're gonna to want to be doing inside an RV. But essentially what a pure sine wave inverter does is it creates a perfectly smooth 
it's very hard to do on my screen here, but up and down, nice even wave pattern for the AC circuit. A modified sine wave basically creates little blocks. It goes up, over, down, over, up, over, down, over. And instead of that nice, smooth, crisp, clean waveform, you're getting this very blocky waveform. And so what happens is you can easily damage electronics, computers especially, your phones, uh, TVs even, and they just don't run nearly as good. Motors don't run good on them. Um, so just modified sine wave, don't even waste your money. They're not, they're not worth trying and then needing a pure sine wave later. Just start with a pure sine wave inverter. If your RV is inverter prepped and you wanna add an inverter right into it, the, the question immediately people have is, well, how do I do that? What do I need? What, what kind of inverter do I need? And uh, unfortunately, there's no direct answer because it's all situational. It depends on what you want and what you want to use it for. If you have an inverter prep system and it goes and feeds, you know, these like seven outlets or, or whatever it is, and you know, your RV is pre-wired for a certain thing, you basically have two options with that. Number one is you can have a standard inverter, which is just going to provide AC power when it is on and it's going to drain power from the batteries. So you can basically have that uh, standard inverter wired up i'm not going to talk about all that right now but let's say that you have that wired up and you have the ac power coming from that inverter to those plugs and you have your dc power coming from your batteries to the inverter and that's what's keeping things going now very quickly you'll start to drain your batteries by running those plugs so how do you recharge your batteries at that point well you're if you're on ac power originally okay if you're plugged into shore power and those outlets aren't working because they're only on the inverter well, the inverter is on and pulling from DC power. You can technically have your converter, your standard charger for the RV system, recharging the batteries, but it has to be enough to actually support that load. If it's not, you either, you either need to upgrade or just go with a different inverter that has pass-through as well. Now, the difference between a pass-through inverter and a standard inverter, let's talk about. And just real quick before I talk about pass-through inverter and standard inverter, um, if you have that regular inverter, and like, like I was just talking about that same situation, you can also have the AC power that comes in, you can have it go to a transfer switch first, and then out of that transfer switch can go to the rest of your, uh, the AC load, right? Whatever the inverter's prepped for, those outlets or, or whatever the case is. Now your inverter can go to the other side of the AC in, AC in number two on the transfer switch. And essentially what happened is when you're on shore power, it would choose the shore power, wouldn't pull from your inverter. And then when you're off of shore power, your inverter can kick on and can provide shore power or can provide AC power to that specific group of outlets. Now it's a little bit more of an advanced install, but it is one option. A pass-through inverter basically has an AC in and an AC out portion to it, okay? Where you can take, take your AC power from the shore and it goes into it and then right back out goes your AC out power. And it essentially is just having this automatic transfer switch that I was just talking about already done for you all in one machine. And they are more expensive, but it's because you're not having to buy a second machine and wire up a second set of things and all this stuff. You literally just plug in the AC power in, the AC power out, you connect your DC power load and you're good to go. And that's what a pass-through pass -through inverter is. It's just like that automatic transfer switch. It knows that if it has shore power, it's just gonna pull from shore and it's just gonna pass it through, right? Pass through inverter. Now, if it is not receiving that AC power and you, know, you, you disconnect from outside, instead of losing power inside the rig, it automatically kicks on the inverter and starts to power up that same exact AC circuit. Now the Victron Multi Plus and the Victron Quattro and the, the Victron line of products is, is a type of pass-through inverter, but it's, it's the next step above, baby. It is, it is just an incredible piece of machinery. And let me just talk about it a little bit. So the Victron Multi Plus, the Victron Quattro, um, kind of what we just talked about has AC in, AC out. And of course it has a DC power coming in from the batteries for when it needs to use that. But one of the really cool things about the Multi Plus and the Quattro is power assist. What power assist does is basically if you have say a 50 amp RV or a 30 amp RV, let's just, let's just take the 50 amp RV for example, and you have your Multi Plus 2 wired up to power the whole rig. Well, when you're plugged into shore power, it knows you, okay, you're on 50 amp, it's just gonna pass through the power and it's gonna do the thing. But let's say you get to a campground and they don't have 50 amp, they only have 30 amp. Uh, or, or even worse, you're at a friend's house and you're just plugged in with a standard extension cord and you're on 15 amp. 
Okay, let's take the 15 amp example because a lot of people mooch dock in people's driveways. So if you have 15 amp power plugged in and you have a, a multi plus or a quattro, you tell the multi plus or quattro through the programming, hey, I'm on 15 amp power. It will then provide 15 amps of pass through power, but once your RV detects or, or is using more than 15 amps worth of power inside, the multi plus makes up for the extra bit and of course it's, it's limited to its capacity so if you have a 3000 watt inverter it can only make 3000 watts obviously but um let's just say like i said you're, you're on that 15 amp and you know you're running an air conditioner and it's only pulling 12 or 13 amps that's great well typically right there you'd be stopped you couldn't do anything else but if you have the multi plus you could then run a hair dryer or run uh the microwave for two minutes and let's say when it turns the microwave on it's now pulling an extra thousand watts and you're pulling uh, 17, 18, 19 amps, well, you're only plugged into 15 amps. So the extra four amps is basically being made up by that inverter through what's called that power assist. And it's just an incredible piece of technology. I absolutely love having that available. Uh, I don't typically ever use it because I'm off grid all the time anyways. But before when I had my big country, I used it all the time. 30 amp plugs, 15 amp plugs, whatever the case was, I would change it, tell it where I'm at, and it was just amazing to just let the inverter do its thing. Now, the other side to the Multi Plus uh, and the Quattros is the fact that it's also a charger. It is active, actively charging your battery bank um, to the best, you know, whatever you whatever you tell it to. So while you have your AC in, AC out, and you have your DC in, it's going to provide, it's going to take power from the batteries when it wants it, but it's going to put ba power back in the batteries when it's available, right? So if you're on shore power, you're on 15 amps, you have it turned down and telling it that, hey, I'm only on 15 amps, I need my I need the power assist if I need it, but uh, you're only using eight amps. You're not really doing much. It's, you know, a couple things are on TV, whatever. Well, it's only having eight amps being used. So the extra seven amps available, it's gonna use to charge the batteries and recharge the batteries. And of course, if you're on 30 amp and 50 amp, that's where it's just gonna re recharge batteries much, much quicker. But it's just an amazing thing that, you know, if, you, if you're on 15 amp, it's gonna use the batteries when you need it then it'll recharge it right afterwards and start to top the batteries back off. I just can't talk about them enough. That's it for this week's episode of Solar Saturdays. Uh, I hope you guys learned something here about inverters. Please make sure to drop a comment down below. Let me know some of your thoughts, some of your uh, questions, anything like that. I'll be happy to answer them as best as I can. And uh, make sure to hit that like, hit the subscribe, turn on the notification bell. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching on RV. Bye.